Creed too. Yeah. Live streams going. Hi everyone. My name is Randall Terry, and we are going to have a presentation, probably take 18 minutes. I'm asking two things. Number one, we will not field questions from the press until the presentation is done, because we don't want to jump the gun, and a lot of what you are going to ask, we are going to cover. All right? We'll get out of here much quicker if we do that. Second of all, anybody who is here that is not a member of the, of the press, we request that you do not ask questions, don't make speeches. This is a formal press conference, and we ask you to respect that. My name is Randall Terry. I'm the founder of Operation Rescue. My name is spelled R-A-N-D-A-L-L-T-E-R-R-Y. This is, this is a lady who has become a dear friend of mine, Teresa Bukanovac. She is the founder and the director of POW. That is P-A-A-U, Progressive Anti-Abortion Uprising. And our relationship has been endearing. It has been courageous. And I have to tell you that she is one of the most courageous people I have ever met in my life. And I am honored to stand beside her and for her and Lauren to tell their story. Teresa. Thank you. Hello, my name is Teresa Bakovinak. I am an atheist, I'm a leftist, and I'm the founder and executive director of POW, the Progressive Anti-Abortion Uprising. On Friday, March 25th, the day of the unborn child, Lauren Handy and I went to Washington Surgery Center to engage in anti-abortion advocacy. Upon arrival, we saw a truck labeled Curtis Bay Medical Waste Services parked outside. We approached the driver who was about to load two large boxes with biohazard symbols onto his truck. We asked him if he knew what was in the boxes and after he said no, we told him, dead babies. The driver was visibly shaken after he confirmed the boxes were from Washington Surgery, I asked him, would you get in trouble if we took one of these boxes? And he asked, what would you do with them if you took one? Lauren said, we will give them a proper burial and a funeral. The driver thought for a second and said, okay, and gestured towards the box. Lauren immediately grabbed the box off of the dolly and we brought it back to her apartment. In the presence of a Catholic deacon, Lauren cut open the box and the red plastic bag inside. We then proceeded to unpack the remains of 110 mostly first trimester aborted children. At the bottom of the box was a clear plastic bag with five more containers, one much bigger than the remaining four. Lauren reached into the largest bucket and removed the remains of a beautiful, intact, and nearly full-term baby boy who we named Christopher X. I think I can speak for both Lauren and I when I say this was the most devastating and soul-crushing experience of our lives. Not even years of anti-abortion advocacy could have prepared us for that moment. And it's a moment that will live on for us for all of time. We continued to open the larger containers and discovered four more babies with a range of injuries, including a fully intact girl we named Harriet, who had one eye open, an incision in the back of her, her neck, her brain suctioned out, and her skull crushed. Two other late-term babies named Angel and Holly were severely dismembered, and the final baby, Phoenix, was whole and still inside the amniotic sac. A feticide is generally used during abortion procedures after 20 weeks gestation to cause an unborn baby a heart attack, which helps prevent a live birth and the excruciating pain of total dismemberment. But in 2013, live action captured undercover footage of abortionist Cesare Santangelo, the sole abortionist on staff for decades at Washington Surgery, admitting that he does not use feticide. Because of this admission and the advanced gestational ages of these babies and their intact condition, the likelihood that some were born alive is undeniable. Additionally, the injuries sustained by Harriet strongly imply she was the victim of a partial birth abortion. 
After spending nearly three days searching for a private pathologist to confirm these violations of federal law, a funeral mass was held at Lauren's apartment, where all 115 babies were named. Shortly after, the 110 smaller children were taken to an undisclosed location for burial. They have since been buried. On March 29th, Lauren and I coordinated with attorneys to alert the DC Homicide Unit of the location of the five larger babies and request an investigation into their deaths. Arrangements were made for the babies to be picked up that evening, but police didn't arrive until the afternoon of the 30th, just hours after Lauren was taken into custody by the FBI in connection with a rescue two years prior. Today I stand in solidarity with Lauren and the eight other defendants who are facing harsh incarceration, incarceration penalties under the FACE Act for simply protecting the victims of violent oppression at Santangelo's clinic. And while these heroes are being unjustly prosecuted, Santangelo continues to kill babies and exploit their parents for profit as he has done for decades. This must end. We are demanding that the DC police conduct a full investigation into the deaths of these babies, including thorough autopsies. We demand that the US Department of Justice prosecute Santangelo for violations of the Born Alive Infant Protection Act and the Partial Birth Abortion Act. And we're demanding it now. And in an effort to keep our promise to the Curtis Bay whistleblower, we demand a proper burial for the remaining five children post-autopsy. Pro-life Americans will not stay silent in the face of such aggressive and barbarous violence, and we will diligently work until the American abortion industrial complex is fully disarmed and dismantled. Thank you. Next is Lauren Handy. Lauren is the director of activism for Powell. Hello, uh, my name is Lauren Handy. I'm a devout Catholic who supports economic left policies and creating a culture of life. I'm also the director of activism for the progressive anti-abortion uprising and one of the nine defendants indicted by the FBI on face charges. I made a promise, a funeral and a burial it has been my desire since the beginning, since March 25th, and through the whole process to ensure these children's dignity were uplifted and respected. During the five days they were under my stewardship, the 115 victims of abortion violence were given a funeral, funeral mass for unbaptized children, and the 110 have been given a proper burial in a private cemetery by a priest. But what about the five? Phoenix, Harriet, Christopher X, Angel, and Holly, the children who have been featured in the news so far, were so advanced in their gestational age, and the patterns of their wounds suggest violent federal crimes. We arranged for the medical examiner to pick up the children. Washington Sergi is part of a network of 21 abortion centers in the DMV area. The abortion industry, which is the overlapping interests of state and business, use fear, isolation, and violence to make off, make profit off of people who are pregnant, families, and in particular, low-income women facing crisis and unwanted pregnancies. Uplifting and showing the five children does not pit us against their parents. I am deeply heartbroken for these families. Their exploitation from Washington Sergi and then their children being used for profit by Curtis Bay shows how deeply flawed our communities are structured. Next, one of the nine defendants who were arrested by the FBI under the FACE Act is Joan Andrews Bell. Joan and I have been good friends for over 30 years and have done, I don't even know how many innumerable pro-life events together, being arrested together. She is currently the founder and director of Gloria Dei Apostolate, and she is nationally known as a living legend and hero. Joan, it's good to be with you. 
I just take this opportunity to thank my dear friends in Powell and all my dear pro-life friends everywhere for every single day doing what they can to the best of their ability by the grace of God to defend little babies, to love their moms and dads, and to love the abortionists and pray for their conversion. I got involved in direct action when I was 12, 13 years old in the civil rights movement. And uh, this action that I do now and have done for the last nearly 50 years is in line with that, to try to stand up for truth, to honor God, and to love my country and my fellow Americans by hoping that we will convert, become a people of love and charity and defend the defenseless and the just. And I just wanna mention, at Nuremberg, after World War II, there, was, there were two trials in which judges were tried for crimes against humanity and doctors tried for crimes against humanity. Now in this country, and, and the allies, Americans and other allied powers, scolded those judges and doctors who said, but it was legal because crimes against the Jews and other individuals uh, was illegal in Germany. In fact, to help a Jew would be a crime against the government and you would be tried with for treason. That's why if you hit a Jew in your home, you could be shot to death. You know, we don't face that much now, but maybe in the near future we will. But what our courts told, what the, the international court told those German criminals was that you cannot legalize murder. And we say it to America today, America, you cannot legalize the murder of the innocent and the just. God bless you. Jonathan Darnell is here with us, a courageous man who is also one of the nine people who were arrested by the FBI, and he is the director of GetSeriousChurch.com. Jonathan. Okay, hi, like I said, uh, my name is Jonathan Darnell. Uh, unlike some of my friends, I'm not myself a progressive, but I am vehemently anti-abortion, and I made this website, GetSeriousChurch.com, to convince Christians to fight abortion more effectively. All right? Now, when you do that, bad stuff can happen to you sometimes. Uh, two years ago, I was filming a peaceful pro-life activity at the Washington Surgery Center, all right? And then we didn't hear anything for two years. And then last Wednesday morning at the crack of dawn, an FBI SWAT team busted down our door, handcuffed myself and all my housemates, arrested me, and held me in custody for uh, nine hours. I never saw a warrant. I accept things like that. I know it's going to happen. But here's what I don't accept. As this case is going to be adjudicated, all right, you're going to hear a lot of uh, Christian and pro-life celebrities condemning us for making waves, for taking risks. There are a lot of people in positions of power in the pro-life movement who think that the only effective way to fight abortion is to stay quiet <laughs> and to not offend anyone. And they've made cowards out of the rest of us for decades. Apparently these 109 babies are not quite human enough to dignify by doing the sort of things that you would do to save the life of a born person. Um, that's nonsense, and I hope the events of this week uh, begin to change that. Thank you. Thank you, John. Finally, we have Missy Smith. Missy is the director of Wake Up. She was my vice presidential candidate a few years back when we ran against Obama as Democrats to run ads on television of, a, of aborted children. Very effective. Before that, she ran for the U.S. House of Representatives, the shadow seat in the district. And some of you might have been around at that time and remember those ads. It was quite a firestorm that was created uh, as Missy ran for Congress, showing aborted fetal remains on television, saying, if you vote for so-and-so, you are voting for this. Missy is a dear friend and colleague and one of the most articulate and courageous women I know. Missy Smith. Thank you, Randall. My name is Missy Smith. I'm here to talk about Dr. Sanangelo, the abortionist who killed these babies. Remember that name, Dr. Sanangelo, spelled S-A-N-T-A-N-G-E-L-O. The reason that the nine pro-lifers were arrested at Sanangelo's office on October 
2020 was to expose him and save babies from his clutches. In November 2000, 2020, I personally retrieved a full-term baby on which Dr. Sanangelo had induced an abortion. She was found in the toilet of a Maryland restaurant. I named her Philomena Grace, and we gave her a proper Catholic burial. The 115 babies found at St. Angelo's abortion mill included 110 first trimester babies, as well as five third trimester babies killed by St. Angelo. The corpses of these five babies appear to indicate a violation of federal law. Dr. San Angelo needs to be investigated immediately by the U.S. Department of Justice, who is tasked with enforcing federal law. Furthermore, we believe the D.C. Metro Police are actively involved in a cover-up of Dr. San Angelo's crimes. The bio-waste company from which we intercepted these children's bodies is Curtis Bay Energy. Remember that name, Curtis Bay Energy. Curtis Bay Energy states on their website that they burn biomedical waste to sustain the energy needs of the Baltimore area. This means tragically that they receive, transfer, and burn the corpses of aborted babies to make electricity for the households and businesses of the Baltimore area. If you live in the Baltimore area, you must know that aborted babies have been burned to keep your lights on and your house warm. We call on Curtis Bay Energy to end this barbaric practice and to confirm publicly that they have done so. All right, now we're going to show, what is it, like two or three minutes tops? Yes. Okay, we're gonna show a couple of clips and there's, there's two reasons that, for this. One is, so you can see the gestational age of the baby named Christopher X and to show that Curtis Bay was involved in transferring these bodies. They, we've heard that they're denying it, which is just absurd. <laughs> we, have, we have the film of it. So when this is done, I will have one more comment, and then we will take questions from the floor. So we also want to give a disclaimer that we believe that it is the right of these victims to have their full stories told. That means having the reality of what abortion, uh, showing the reality of what abortion did to them. Journalistic integrity requires viewing the impact of those victimized by abortion. The videos you are about to view are extremely graphic. If you have abortion-related trauma, have had an abortion, or have experienced pregnancy loss, please be advised. This is real time. So when they open the boxes, you are seeing what they saw for the first time.
just mute it. Um, I know that that is very hard to watch, and I, I cannot imagine we have been in situations like this before where we had the remains, and I want to say something to the Christian community and to the pro-life community, because there are a good number of press people here who are from Catholic and evangelical backgrounds. Teresa and I agree on almost nothing. <laughs> Literally. We'll laugh, we'll have a beer together, and we are committed to ending the killing of children. Lauren and I agree on a couple more things, because we're both Catholic. <laughs> but we tend to be more renegade Catholics, and we, her and I also don't agree on, on much. But the courage and the dedication of these two women is on a level that I have rarely seen. I don't impress easily, and I have been incredibly impressed by these women. And to the Orthodox, to the priest and the Levite who walk by on the other side of the road, remember the Good Samaritan. The priest and the Levite had the right theology. They were the respected pillars of the community. The Good Samaritan was the heretic, the outcast, the one the Jews would have nothing to do with. And Jesus made the Good Samaritan the hero of the story and used the Good Samaritan to rebuke the religious leaders of his day who thought that they were great and high and holy and mighty. And so I endorse what these ladies are doing largely because, 
not only are they saving babies' lives, but because they are living, breathing, walking rebukes to the cowardice and the treachery and the self-love of the Christian community at large and our leaders in particular, the priests and the Levites of our day. They are living, breathing, walking rebukes to cowardly Christian clergy. And I love them both. And finally, picture it's 1850, Charleston, and there's two reporters in this beautiful fair. And one of them is a reporter for a newspaper in Atlanta, and one of them is a reporter for a newspaper in Boston. And the Atlanta newspaper journalist writes about the weather and the beautiful new parasols that just arrived from France and how the cider was so good this year and the flowers were blooming. All accurate, a very accurate depiction. And then the Boston writer discusses the three boats full of slaves that had just arrived and the weeping and how horrible their condition was and, and watching some of the more beautiful females be sold and discussing that they were undoubtedly going to be sold not only into save slavery but sex slavery, which was also an accurate depiction. So you as journalists and your editors in particular have an option have a choice to be the Atlanta journalist or the Boston journalist. But woe to you. Remember, if it was 1942 or 1943 and a German photographer or a videographer made it into Auschwitz or Dachau and took footage of what was happening in those facilities and did not show it, that photojournalist would be a collaborator with the Nazis and with the killers. And that is what has become of so much media in America today. Collaborators by hiding the truth. And it is, it is repugnant. It is a, an offense against God and a treachery against these victims. So now, we will take questions, please, one at a time, and direct the question to any individual. And we will begin with you, and then we'll go to you, sir. Go ahead. Hi, I have two questions. Thank you for um, being here, both of you ladies. Um, could you first speak to the legal action that's been taken against Lauren? I know you mentioned incarceration. Could you just briefly re-explain what action has been taken against her? Um, the action that people are referring to is the um, FBI indictment for the face charge. I have not been contacted by um, Metropolitan Police about uh, the children and um, the FBI were never in my home as well. Thank you, and also as the progressive anti-abortion uprising, I'd like to know if any progressive lawmakers have reacted or responded to these uncoverings, um, and any lawmakers in general. I haven't seen much on my end. I haven't seen it either. Shamefully, no. Thank Sir, you, ladies. Sir, uh, has an independent doctor examined the fetuses before DC police obtained them? Our goal was to make that happen, um, but because we the days were going by and we were unable to find a pathologist or some kind of specialist that could verify the gestational ages of these children and the cause of death, um, that's when we made the determination to turn them over uh, to the homicide unit. DC police has followed up. DC police has said the fetuses were aborted according to DC law. If what I is your reaction to that? We did not want these babies to go to the D.C. police. They should have gone to the federal government. They should have gone to the DOJ or to the FBI. Go ahead and look. You can kill a baby for any reason up to the day of birth in D.C. None to see here, people. So the police are <laughs> betraying the babies. And in some ways, they're covering for Sant'Angelo just because what he did is legal here. This is like one step away from hell. But the federal government passed the Partial Birth Abortion Act, the federal government passed the Born Alive Infant Protection Act, and they are the ones, the DOJ is tasked with dis determining if these babies were the victims of crimes. It's really a simple test. Did air get in their lungs? If they were born alive, there'll be, there'll be evidence that air was breathed in. Gosnell, many of you are familiar with the abortion in Philadelphia. He's in prison for the rest of his life without parole because he was doing abortions like this. And San Angelo is a criminal. These people are heroes. And 
and they're facing jail, and Santangelo is a mass murderer walking free while the DOJ persecutes the innocent. Yes? Do you believe that you have any hope of the Biden DOJ actually prosecuting Santangelo? <laughs> I believe in people power. <laughs> I believe in people power, and I believe in the hope that justice will prevail. And to that same end, are you concerned at all that they are going to charge you in relation to this action? Um, I mean, it's a possibility. Uh, we don't know what's going to happen, um, but we're, we're not afraid. Every action has con consequences, and we weighed our actions, and we know that we have to accept those consequences as well. And I believe co those consequences are worth it in the pursuit of justice for these five, in the pursuit of justice for people who were exploited by the abortion industry. Uh, Joan, uh, can I get you to address, um, seems like what we're witnessing right now is a really important moment in the pro-life, the history of the pro-life movement. Could you just talk about how important this day is and what is going on right now? I think whenever the victims are brought into focus and are spoken of, allowing people to love them, to repent. It's a great thing. It's a great, great thing. Whether it will be a landmark um, moment, all depends on the response of the people, of those who love God, those who maybe don't even know God, but they love the baby. The response will make it known whether this is taken seriously. What happened with these children and um, what's been going on in our country for, yeah. this is the 50th year of legalized child murder. So it, it, we have to wait and see. Cool. Uh, thank you, Jonathan and Randall, for your comments about uh, Christians and uh, their inaction. Uh, can I get you to comment, what is your message to progressives? There is no progress without the unborn. We cannot build a better world on a pile of murdered children. That's not progress. Real progress is protecting the vulnerable from exploitation, from people like Santangelo, who are the real villains here. True progressives must stand up against this injustice. And like Lauren, I believe in the power of people. We're never going to be able to outspend the abortion industrial complex, but we can embolden enough people to stand up to them, and that's what we intend to do. Can I ask a couple questions? Yes, um, please. Could you, first, could you clarify again when you mentioned about the thing with police and how they came to your house and how they were summoned? Because I know there was a letter from your lawyer, so I wanted to add, just clarify make sure I understood that. And secondly, it looked like you were videotaping, right, with the, with the box. Do you have a videotape of the person, the conversation, and you giving the box, and giving you the box? We don't have video of that. We have some photographs uh, time stamped around that time. Um, sorry, was there another question? Yeah. Well, just the first one about, about um, explain me again. You said that you had thought the police were coming in the morning, and yes. they came later. Yes, so our attorney made arrangements with um, the DC Homicide Unit to pick up the children on the night of the 29th. We were instructed to go to the apartment, unlock the door, allow the police to come in and take the babies and return two hours later to lock up. We were tired. Lauren has been staying at my apartment this entire time. Uh, we were not staying in the apartment, eating in the apartment. Um, and we decided we were tired. We were just gonna go back in the morning in the morning, we started receiving calls and word that the FBI was making arrests in this unrelated but connected through Santangelo case. Um, and so we hurried over to her apartment to check and see if the police had taken the babies. When we arrived, we stepped out of the Uber, FBI stepped out of their cars, they arrested Lauren on the sidewalk. Um, I took a video of that interaction and then she was taken into custody. The FBI never entered her home. They asked me to take her things into her apartment, which I did, and when I went in, I realized that um, the babies were still there. I then contacted the lawyers and they made arrangements um, to uh, 
I allowed the DC police to, I gave them permission to enter the home just a, a few hours after Lauren's arrest. Can you say something right there? Yes, ma'am. Actually, let me say something and then we'll take your question. Sure. There have been people complaining that they had the babies in their apartment for a total of five days. Hmm. Uh, the 110 smaller children were taken away earlier than that and have been properly buried by a Catholic priest. It is beyond disingenuous, it's offensive that anyone would call into question their <clears throat> manners or their integrity for having these babies in a refrigerator when they took such care to treat them with honor and dignity and sought nothing but a proper Christian burial. The people who are complaining about the fact that they had these babies are are at the height of hypocrisy. The horror is that this happened to these babies and that Sant Angelo had them in his refrigerator for months and that they were going to be burned to make electricity for Maryland. That's what's offensive. Yes, ma'am. You mentioned the 110 who were buried by the Catholic priest. Who coordinated that burial? I know you mentioned it when um, you spoke. Who coordinated that on your team? Did you also contact the DC police for that burial? Where were they buried? Who was the Catholic priest? What are the details of that? Um, information will come more forward soon. Uh, right now we're trying to arrange a tombstone with the, with the names etched on the tombstone. Are they buried in the district? Uh, once again, more information will come forward soon. We're arranging a tombstone with the names etched on the tombstone. Thank you. And is the priest in the district? Well, sorry, once again, uh, <laughs> more information will come soon. Um, we want to get a tombstone with the names etched on the tombstone. Thank it was you. One of the reasons we waited till today to do the press conference is there's so many moving parts and there's so many details. And <clears throat> it would be unfair to the priest to let his sure. name out prematurely. So Can you it, at least answer if you coordinated with DC police or anyone within DC when you when you conducted that burial? No, ma'am, we won't answer, but but no. <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, the video shown uh, has the box uh, opening up, and then afterwards you see the containers. Was there more video shot, and if so, will that be released? There was a, an exorbitant amount of footage. So, and, uh, go ahead and answer it, because you're going to put it up on your website. Yes, soon, you? before we opened the box, we set up a camera in the room that took you know real-time footage of the entire event. Um, these close-up shots that you see were taken from my phone, um, which are just a little bit more visible um, for you guys to understand what was going on. The other camera is from a distance. I have a statement, if I can, from Curtis Bay Energy, if I can get some comment from it. And I quote, on March 25th, the Curtis Bay employee took custody of three packages from the Washington Surgery Center, Washington Surgery Clinic, and delivered all of them to Curtis Bay's incineration facility. At no time did the Curtis Bay employee hand over any of these packages to the mm -hmm. PAAU or other third party, and any allegations made otherwise are false. One more paragraph. As stated in client agreements and company policy, customers like Washington Surgery Clinic are prohibited from disposing of fetuses and human remains via Curtis Bay services. Curtis Bay provides its clients with medical waste bags and boxes to use in a manner that complies with applicable law, client agreements, and company policy. Curtis Bay continues to fully cooperate with law enforcement. Could you please comment? Uh, when we spoke with the driver, he did say that he had already scanned the boxes in, and that was right before he asked, what would you do with them? Um, so I, I am not sure if Curtis Bay is lying or if he simply already scanned them in and so therefore they're accounting for them. Um, from our observation, there was only two boxes, um, but it's possible that he had loaded one onto the truck before we arrived. Um, what was the last part of that? We've come to the point that it's possible that, that they don't know that the abortion is. Right, and it's definitely possible that they don't know what is inside the box. It's possible that Santangelo was in a violation of his contract with Curtis Bay by putting <clears throat> these babies in this box. Um, but one of them is in the wrong, one of them is needs to be held accountable, well, both of them. I, I find it hard to believe that, that the company that takes medical waste from abortion clinics would never put two and two together that there are aborted human remains. It's absurd. What do you think, what, what else would they have? Uh, let's see, uh, uh, let's go with you, ma'am, and then you, sir, go ahead. My tangent to that is, um, how did you know what was in the box before asking for it? I'm gonna answer that, you mind. No, go ahead. So, Teresa and Lauren picked up the box not knowing what was in it. They called me and I said, we don't know what's in it. Go get gloves, go get masks, 
be very careful. You literally don't know what's inside. Set up a camera and then film opening the box in real time. So it could have been just, you know, piles of bloody rags or whatever, but it was, in fact, babies. If we had the audio turned on at the unboxing, you would hear Lauren reacting and saying, it's babies, it's babies, because we didn't know. And all of that audio will be on what's online. We apologize if this failed. This, sir, here, and then you, ma'am. Go ahead. Can you describe uh, any conversations you've had with mainstream pro-life groups in the past several days, perhaps ones that they don't want to say on the record, but them having discussions with you, maybe advising you or, or providing kind of comments and support, even if they don't want to speak on the record publicly? <clears throat> What is the question? Say it again. You're saying what pro-life leaders and pro-life groups have we spoken to? Yeah, and, and especially if, if they don't want to speak on the record, can you convey you know, why they have told you they don't want to speak on the record about this? I have no comment on that. I have no comment. I, they have to speak an answer for themselves. Uh, it was you, ma'am, and then you, ma'am. Go ahead. Now you said that you weren't sure what was in the box um, when you unboxed them, but before that, wouldn't you have had to tell the Curtis Bay employees that this, you, you said that they were uh, fetuses in these boxes? So um, did you it tell was, them that? It was, the logical, it was the logical assumption that they were going on when they spoke to the driver. This is coming from the abortion mill. It's a huge, heavy box full of medical waste. So, do you know what's in this box? No, he, you know, probably dead babies. I don't think that they were. Well, you can answer that. Yeah, right? I mean that's exactly right. We we were going on an assumption, um, and wanted to convey to him um, that there was a probability that there were dead babies in there. Okay. Next question. Go ahead, ma'am, from the Washington Post. You had mentioned um, a little bit about you know your questions about other pro-life groups. Live action had had aired these videos. Can you tell us? Are you working closely with them? Who else did you share the videos with? And your lawyer is from Center for Medical Progress. Are you part of those organizations? Can you share a little bit about your relationship to those groups? Um, they're, they're not directly involved. I had shared some information that they did release. Um, we did not authorize that, but you know, it's it's been a very tense situation. There's a lot of trauma involved with viewing these videos, especially for those of us who are already engaged in pro-life activism. And um, you know, it's it's uh, water under the bridge. Pal believes Pal believes and promotes unity through diversity, and it is important now for the justice for the five that we come together in unity. To, to ensure that the five get the proper justice, proper burial, an autopsy. Um, we believe in, once again, unity through diversity. <clears throat> God save us. Yes, ma'am. Hi, I was wondering if you could talk a little bit about what the dimensions of the box were. I know there was video of the box, but how big it was. Sure? Um, if, if you know that. Uh, mm -hmm. And also what your interactions have been with DC police. Are they, are you like in that. contact with them? Like this. Okay. Like a moving They're box. Big. Okay. Okay. And it was just one box. One box. Just okay. a receipt. We haven't had any interactions um, with the police uh, other than allowing them to enter the property, pick up the babies, and that's it. Okay. As far as you know, where are the five now? I mean, as far as we know, they're in the custody of the police. The DC medical examiner. The DC our, our concern the DC is that they will. They, our, our concern is that they will treat these babies improperly. These must. These children must have a proper burial, and the callousness and the speed with which the DC police responded shows that they're not interested in justice in this matter. And our concerns come from how Gosnell's victims were incinerated and put in a potter's grave. Did you? Hey, so in reaching out to the DC medical examiner, I've been told that Mayor Bowser is handling all communications on this front. Have you guys heard from Bowser at all? No. No. Do you have any uh, idea whether she'll allow autopsies to be performed? No. We don't know. I'm going to say something. Mm -hmm. You're watching in real time mm -hmm. a, a crime against children and a cover up in broad daylight. Give the babies to the uh, proper authorities, 
give the babies to somebody without an agenda and let them do an autopsy. What was their age? How were they killed? Were any of them alive outside of the womb before they were discarded? These are simple questions. And any journalist in this room that wants to make it seem like the mayor is the hero or that these guys are the villains, you should be ashamed of yourself. We've seen stories come out over the last few days from left-wing crazy rags that are, they would be funny. It would be like the onion was writing them, except that they're so grotesque. So if nothing else, at least accurately report what are the focal and central points of the story. Babies found. How old were they? Why is it the Fed going after these people at the same time? These people contacted the local authorities, and then suddenly the DOJ comes in with the FBI to arrest them. Are they connected? We don't know. We may never know. That was going to be my question, actually. You call, if I understand the timeline correctly, you call the police, and two days later a two-year-old case comes up? The indictment had come almost a month earlier. The, the DOJ under Trump was not prosecuting these cases. So somebody wanted to show their pro-abortion bona fides at the Department of Justice and dug up a case that was two years old. And probably the speed at which it happened, I mean, a month earlier is the indictment, but then suddenly when these babies are found, I think somebody at the DOJ and the police coordinated. That's my <clears> gut, <throat> but I could be wrong. question. Um, as you point out, D.C. has very few restrictions on abortions. How can you be certain that these fetuses were not terminated based on medical need and or to save the woman's life? How can you be certain that wasn't the case? Well, an autopsy would help reveal that. Um, we know from the small amount of statistics that we do have on the topic that the majority of even late-term, third-trimester abortions are done for elective reasons, um, but the reality is we don't know, which is exactly why we contacted the police asking them for an autopsy. And, and the DC medical examiner has said that they've looked into this and that they don't see any reason to move forward. Therefore, at this point, the fetuses are in the hands of the medical experts who say that they aren't that they have no reason to move forward, that it's under they, they said that a, a day later. It's very hard for me to imagine that they were able to conduct thorough autopsies um, on five unborn children, or possibly born, uh, within one day. Are you at all concerned about the possibility of vigilantism towards uh, Sant'Angelo following this presser, and can you state sort of unequivocally that you only want this dealt with through lawful means? I am strategically, politically, and religiously against all forms of aggressive violence. I have always been strategically, politically, and religiously against all forms of aggressive violence. You, sir. Legally, if there's a conflict between the DC and the FBI and the national, how is that settled? Who is, who get, gets priority up? It's a little bit confusing. He's asking if there's a conflict between the DC police and the FBI. As you know, there are a lot of good people in law enforcement, and there are some that aren't good, and then what you deal with is the management. So the Biden management of the DOJ does not hold out much promise that the FBI would do a proper investigation into these babies, but they are the ones who should be tasked with it. So the, D, the, the DC police picked up the babies. That's who the lawyer contacted. I believe personally that that was a strategic mistake. The babies should, should have been turned over to yes, the babies should have been turned over to the FBI. What did I mean? Did well, you the, say, the president. Do you mean about this case in specific, or are you talking about some other cases? Well, did this case say, specifically. So, the, in, in that they haven't responded yet, or what did you mean when, when you said when the DOJ wasn't giving you confidence? What do you mean when you say the DOJ isn't giving you confidence? The Biden. Oh, because they they're arresting people who did a sit-in at this abortion facility, and the guy who's running the abortion facility is walking free. <laughs> I mean. How, how much more of a glaring testimony do you want? I would also like to make a further comment on people who use violence to create social change. We cannot mirror the injustice. We must break that cycle of violence. We must act nonviolently. We cannot mirror the injustice. We want to build a culture where instead of hurt people hurt people, 
but heal people, heal people. We must promote justice, peace, beauty, and truth. And I am against all forms of aggressive violence. And, and going forward, we all must, for, for, these, for these five, we must act in nonviolence. Sure. Oh, that's actually, that, the California case, is that, is that kind of a precedent for this? In other words, the, the other side was arrested, is being charged? Does that have any relationship with that? I don't know either. The Delta and the... the oh, David Delight. David Delight. Yeah. Delight. Yeah. Oh, is, is that a precedent that could address. affect this, or is there not completely um, different? We don't know. If any of you want to have lengthy interviews, we have... Um, We've been able to set up some long form interviews for Teresa and Lauren. And if any of you are interested in that, please see one or the other of them, give your contact information, uh, and we'd be happy to set something up. Unless there's any, and dying, we appreciate you being here and wish all of you the best and be safe. Godspeed be with you. Oh, and by the way, if you want to get a tight shot, those are the names. So there was a naming ceremony for the babies with the priest present. So these are the 110 names that were given for the first trimester babies and the five names at the bottom were the ones given for the late term. Sir, if you could move that tripod then people could get a shot of it if they want. Did you have a microphone set up, or were you just using the mic and the camera? Just <laughs> That's not good. In the Lauren, in the Kristen, just yeah. buy a mic as fast as you can. Good job, everyone. All right, let's go to the left. Thank you.